At some point in college, I think, I ran into these words by the poet Adrian Rich that didn't so much shape my life as define my life, put into words what I somehow already knew but couldn't quite say. Rich wrote, No one sleeps in this room without dreaming last and late of the true nature of poetry, the drive to connect, the dream of a common language. The true nature of poetry, the drive to connect, the dream of a common language. That kind of says it all for me about who I am, about what my life is about. It says it for me as a poet about that understanding that poetry is about trying to put the pieces together, that elusive need to make sense of things by gathering them together. And I love the notion of a dream of a common language. Not a common language, but an acknowledgement that we never quite get there, that language never takes us all the way, that we never can know what's truly in somebody else's head, that nobody can truly know what's in our head, and yet there's that dream, that longing to understand, to be understood. As it turns out, that describes for me my passion for training dogs, which you might think is a pretty different thing from writing poetry. I love training dogs. I do obedience competitions and dog dance competitions and all manner of wild and crazy dog things, but what really thrills me is that notion that a species that's really quite different from ours, not even anywhere close on that family tree of life, that they want to communicate with us. And we want to communicate with them, and just out of the sheer will to be connected, we find ways to do that. Not completely. The common language is always a dream, but we do it. Those of you who have pets, and particularly those of you who have dogs, who communicate with us better than any other species on the planet, know that much of the time, most of the time, the drive to connect is enough for us to communicate. And for those of us who commit ourselves to training dogs, it's a matter of refining techniques and finding out just how far we can take that ability to connect, to communicate, to know what each other means. And it's a thrill. It's so much fun. But ultimately, what really matters to me most, what makes the most sense about this notion of the dream of a common language, is just in our human relationships, in our friendships. What moves me is that we as human beings just carry this drive, this willingness to connect with one another, however imperfectly, however incompletely, however much potential there is for hurt feelings and misunderstandings, however difficult it is, we want to do it. We choose to connect, to make friends across boundaries of race and class and culture and nationality, across age and ability and experience. We do it. We find those ways to connect and in that we gain a precious insight, a way of seeing the world that we would never get if we didn't make that effort to cross those chasms, those barriers, to act out of that dream, always unfulfilled, of a common language. And that, my friends, is why it's so exciting to me that we are here together in this oddly intimate 
and strangely distant place separated by continents, mostly without ever seeing one another's faces, without knowing one another's histories or families or even necessarily occupations or interest, we're here in this funny little chat bar out of that pure drive to connect, out of that willingness to love one another without even knowing those things that we assume that love and connection are based on. Just out of the drive to connect, to know, to be known, to share our thoughts, our feelings, our joys, our sorrows, our prayers, we do it. Does that amaze you as much as it does me? Does it move you as much as it does me? That drive to connect that dream of a common language that we find in our friends who are our nearest and dearest, the ones we talk to every day, and that we find weekly or even in just one brief meeting. The connection, the dream that we keep following, of a common language.